Meta is now recommending the Google Broad with your ads campaign. If you've looked into their Meta Performance 5, one of their main point was actually telling you to go with Advantage Plus campaigns, which that in fact simplifies your ad account structure, but also implies that you must use broad targeting in order to effectively scale your Facebook ads campaigns. Now, I've personally been a big advocate of interest-based targeting of lookalike audiences. And I've been doing that since I started advertising on Facebook, but it has come to my attention through other people online and especially a close friend of mine that was actually a big adamant of broad targeting already a few months ago that this is the way to go moving forward. So in today's video, I wanna talk about the exact campaign structure you must be using with your Facebook ads to target broad audiences while leveraging dynamic creative tests. If you don't know who I am, my name is Justin, and I'm the founder at Wizzle Media, an e-commerce marketing agency specializing in elevating thriving brands by simplifying e-commerce growth. So before we get started, I do want to mention that, look, this, again, this strategy comes from a close friend of mine who's actually put me onto it, but I know that he's taken it from other people on YouTube. So you may have heard other YouTubers such as Charlie or Nick Therio talk about a similar structure. And not gonna lie, I don't know how I didn't catch on sooner. I've heard that Nick has actually been using that structure for the last year. So again, all credits goes to these guys for coming up with this structure over the last few years. But with that being said, let's get straight into it. So from a strategy standpoint, the structure looks like that and again this is exactly the same rules that Charlie follows and I'm just basically showing it to you in different terms and showing it to you in one of our ad accounts at our agency so if you're not familiar with this structure you basically have three ad sets so you run one campaign this campaign is a CBO under that CBO campaign you have three ad sets you have one main ad set which I'll explain in a second what that ad set is about then you have two DCTs. Again, if you're not yet familiar about what a DCT is, I'll share with you in the next few minutes what it is and how can you turn this feature on on Facebook ads. So the way that you turn on the DCT is actually at the ad set level. So let's just say you're making a conversions campaign on Facebook ads and then you end up you know, making your first ad set. When scrolling, you actually see this option right here that says dynamic creative, which you can either turn on or off. For the sake of this video, if you're doing a DCT, again, DCT stands for dynamic creative test, you must turn this feature on. So what it does is basically at the ad level, you only have one ad now. Now, as you can see, what that allows you to do is actually upload many creatives to this singular ad. So you can upload different creatives and it won't turn them into a carousel or anything like that. So. But what you do is you upload these different assets and you upload different headlines and copies like shown in the structure right here. And what Facebook will do, it'll actually make these different combinations between your assets to best show them to whoever they think is gonna convert. What I mean by that is that Facebook will be leveraging machine learning to actually figure out which combo is probably gonna be the best to show to X person and then show that combination to that person. Now, this rules for those DCTs that is popularized by Charlie is the three, two, two, which essentially what that does is for every DCT that you run, you upload three ad creatives. So three photos or three videos, as an example, you must make all creatives of the same type for that to really work. So basically you have your three creatives right here, two, two. So two ad copies, two headlines in a following a very similar structure. So right here you have your previously best ad copy. So an ad copy that you've tested a couple different times that has worked great. Same thing for the headline, a past headline that you have tested, it has worked great. Then you have a new ad copy you're testing and a new headline. Now the way that you wanna structure this is that you wanna have one DCT per ad concept. And each concept is actually tied to a market desire. I can make a whole separate videos about what are market desires and how can you best find market desires for your specific persona. But just for the sake of it, let's just say that we're selling a ball, like in this case, right? We have an app, which is the ad account I've shown earlier that I'm gonna show again in just the next few minutes. We have an app. One of the desires that we're tapping into is that we don't want the persona. The persona essentially doesn't wanna be ghosted. They don't wanna get ghosted on this app because it's a messaging app, right? So that's one of the desires that is as an example, this DCT could tap into a desire of not wanting to get ghosted. So then each ad creative within that DCT is around the same concept of not wanting to get ghosted. And what you do is you test only one variable that you isolate per creative. So as an example, if this is a static creative, you could change the big bold text that's gonna be on there, it can be different for all three. 
but the placement of the image and everything else is the same. If this is an example, a video, then it could be the visual hook. So you could just start the video slightly differently for all three of them, but they all need to be a hook around, again, the same desire. Don't make the same mistake that I did when I initially started using this model, whereas I thought that each creative had to be around a different angle. No, again, they're all around the same idea. You test one DCT per main idea, which we call a concept, and each individual creative has, again, one slightly different element. So. Again, you usually start with the hook, but let's say you've already tested a couple hooks. You know you have a strong concept right here because you ran a DCT in the past. Now, I'm gonna get into that in just the next few minutes, but that became a winning ad. So you could start testing other elements. You could throw that same concept back into a new DCT and then from there start testing other elements, such as a different creator, such as potentially a different body of the video, such as a different CTA different offer or more. Now, the goal with the DCT is to find a winning ad combination. It's to find one of these combinations right here. Would it be, let's say, ad one with new ad copy, but previously best ad line. Find one combo that becomes a winner, which will define soon what a winner is. And once you find a winner, then you wanna extract the post ID of that winner, go into your main ad set that you have right here, and then put it in your main ad set, which basically, in other words, your main ad set is an ad set for winners. You could call it winners ad set, whatever you want, but here is all of the winning ads that you have that have proven to be effective that are continuously exceeding KPIs. Those are the creators that you wanna put within that ad set. So as an example, going back into this client's account right here, you can see that we have one, two, three DCTs right now, and our ads are off in our main ad set. Why is that? Isn't that going against what we have right here? Yes. It is, but right now, the main problem is that we're not hitting all KPIs that we want for that specific account. And any previous ad that was there before we started working with this client, which essentially we've only been working with them for a few weeks at this point, it's not even been a month, they actually they never hit the KPIs that they wanted before. So there's not a lot of winning ads that we can reuse. So right now we're doing three DCTs simultaneously in the hopes of, again, trying to pull these winning combinations into our main ad set. Now, how do you optimize this ad model. So this becomes a lot more of a creative optimization cycle. So I've made a separate video on that in the last few months that actually talked about the new way of optimizing your ads, which we had already been doing with our different campaign structure, right? We were using the traditional top moth buff campaign models, and we were still using this creative optimization cycle right here, which looking into it kind of looks like this. So that creative optimization cycle looks like this. You first have the thumb stop ratio, which you look at, which is basically your hook, right? How strong is your hook? Then you look into the hold rate, then you're gonna look into your average watch time, which are kind of very similar. So how many people you hold through the video versus how many people actually watch certain parts of the video. So TikTok calls it the quartiles. So you basically have 25%, 50%, 75% video watch time, which on Facebook is basically a 25% video view, 50%, etc. Now you have CTR and then click the rate to conversion rate, which is the metrics that we look at as an agency to optimize at the creative level. What that does right here is the following. So if I go into Google right now and I invite you to do the same, you look into the Meta Performance 5, you just type in Meta Performance 5 and you should find this article right here. Again, the main point that they're talking about is simplify your account and they're telling you to use Advantage Plus Shopping Campaign, which I've made a separate video on recently. Now, Advantage Plus Shopping Campaign is quite similar to this structure actually right here. Because technically with Advantage Plus Shopping Campaign, the only thing that you remove out of this structure is basically this level. You don't even have the ad set level any, anymore and you are straight into a creative only level, which essentially from that part, you could have every single creative that you want in there and then kind of have all of them compete against each other, but you can't really um, organize them under a DCT and really split test concepts like that. They would kind of all be competing against one another within the same campaign. But essentially it comes back to the same thing. It's a simplified way of running a Facebook ad account, which algorithm likes that and also removes a whole lot of pressure and potential fuck ups that you might be doing while trying to target different audiences. And to be quite honest, you're probably wasting a lot of time testing these different audiences, whereas most of your focus and impact nowadays is at the creative level, which is basically, again, what Facebook is telling you, which their primary point is talking about account simpl simplification, using AI, going broad, and then they have this huge point right here talking about creative, which diversify your creatives, focus a lot on the creative concept, right? Concept is a key word right here, because we'll go back right there, all of our DCTs are about a specific concept. So again, 
This is not coming out of nowhere. This is following the exact recommendations that Facebook has been telling us for the last few months, right? It's since the end of September, 2022 to use. Now ignore this part right there because that's why I put an actual uh, little uh, uh, like rectangle on top of it because it's actually partially inaccurate, but this is how you want to optimize your ads. So you look into your dynamic creative test, you wait around three days um, and then you look at your last three days of data. So you look at your last three days of combined data and then you look into did the dynamic creative test spend at least three times my cost per acquisition? Yes or no? Or did it spend it over the AOV? Depending on what your KPIs or targets are, right? If the answer is no, you actually wait a little longer. You can check back tomorrow, look back into the last three days, which will give you like an additional day of data. And then you look into, you ask yourself the same question again. Now, if the answer is yes, then you look into, did the DCT take at least 40% of the total CBO budget and hit KPI? Meaning, did Facebook automatically allocate more than 40% of the total campaign budget to that singular DCT and did that DCT successfully hit KPI. Now, small asterisks right here, spend is a very good indicator of performance usually on Facebook. If Facebook thinks an ad is going to be a winner, it'll start spending more on that particular ad. In the case of a DCT, the same is true. So if that's the case, then what you wanna do is where you wanna extract the post ID of your winning ad combinations right here, then put that into your main ad set. And then once the DCT ad uh, or with the DCT winner, I should say, started spending in a main ad set, then you turn off the DCT. If it hasn't yet started spending in a main ad set, you wait until it does and then you turn it off. Or in this case, if the DCT did indeed spend or take more than 40% of the total CBO budget, but did not hit KPIs, in that case, turn it off because you don't want to be wasting too much spend. Now, looking to a campaign optimization level, it's pretty simple. So you, again, look at the last three days of data continuously. And if the overall campaign is above KPI goal, if the answer is yes, you increase budget by 20%. If the answer is no, you decrease budget by 20% or you coast until you find a winner, depending on how comfortable you're at with the current budget level. Now, once you actually find a pretty good pool of winners, let's say you have three, four, five ads that are considered winners, they're all spending, they're all doing pretty good, they're all getting great results, it's not time to sit back and let the ad account coast. You need to keep on testing DCTs. Ideally, you always wanna follow a structure like this. At all times, you should have at least two dynamic creative tests that are running, meaning that every week you should be launching new DCTs and trying to find new concepts because you never know when these are gonna die out and need to be replaced with new concepts. Now, I'm not gonna lie and sit here and tell you that we've spent millions with this campaign type yet. We haven't, we've just started deploying that across our ad accounts, but my close friend has had a lot of experience and great results with this for his e-commerce brand. I've also seen other YouTubers, again, using a similar structure, just like Nick Dario, who's actually spent over $4 million in a year in a singular ad account on one campaign, which followed a similar structure to this one. So with that being said, I'm pretty confident this will allow us to actually do a better job at creating stronger ads for our clients, given that we're gonna spend less time with the fluff, less time on finding, again, these different audiences and more time doing what matters, which is, again, creating the most effective ads. With that being said, there's gonna be a couple links in the description down below that I invite you to check out. One of them, for everyone watching this video, we have a free Facebook group community, which again, if you have any questions regarding Facebook ads, TikTok ads, Google ads, anything e-commerce related, feel free to join that group and ask in there. Again, community of other marketers and e-commerce brand owners just like you in that group. Or again, in full transparency, we have two offers at Wizzle Media. One, which is if you wanna work with the agency and have us produce all of your ads and campaigns, then book in a call down below with the link for that. Or if you actually want us to help you out on more of a done with you slash consulting basis and have my team and I over your shoulder, looking into your ad accounts and then guiding you to the right process or helping you go to markets, and more, we also have an offer for that listed down below. With that being said, check out other videos on the channel for some more useful e-commerce marketing tips, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.